Hi, it's Ray Mills from Excel and VBA Craftsman. Today I want to talk about building a Gantt chart using just VBA um, and a few statistics. So here we have a Gantt chart that, that uh, I developed to demonstrate this. And it actually started when a customer came to me and a client came and asked about a Gantt chart they had developed where they actually created it using simple formulas, conditional formatting. And while that worked, it required that each year have 365 different separate cells to represent the days of the year and then uh, a formula in each one of those. So that became extremely calculation intense. So with all those formulas and whatever, it started acting really buggy. So they first they asked me if I could put a red line to represent today. And today, for the purposes of this demonstration, it's August 31st. Okay? So, um, so there's my red line. And it'll build that automatically. It'll create that. So it, let's, it's, you have 10 different projects, a planned start date, a planned end date, represented in green. And then blue represents the current, if it's you know before August 31st, or the estimated, right? So current estimated start, current estimated finish, right? So it's actual before the 31st, and then and after that, it's just estimated what we think will happen, okay? Now, the blue or the dark black di diamonds indicated an event. So here we had a little slippage, right? We had slippage because, let's see. Hit the button, and come on. Oh, there we go. I didn't hit it far enough. Um, so Sicily Road had a, a, a rush, washout for three days. Now... How do we know that? Let's just go over here and do this again. Well, I have a list of, to the right, a list of what I call events. <coughs> we had a washout. We had some inclement weather. It was below zero for several days. A fire at the site and tractor, result in tra tractor damage. And vandalism, right? So, so things that can go wrong uh, in a construction project. And the, the purpose of this is if you could visualize, you're putting it up on the, uh, a wall somewhere and they're projecting it up. And everybody's looking at it on their screen or whatever. And then you can talk about these different things. And then maybe, and I kept it simple, but there could be maybe multiple events happening. And just by clicking on them, you get an indication of what happened, right? And you can go on and on. Let's see, are there more? I don't know. Oh, yeah, there's one down here. Let's take a look. That went off screen, so that's not good. So let's go back up. Yeah, you go. okay. So it'll appear. Um, it, it acts a little buggy because it's on my... I'm doing this and using a, um, uh, a software product to, to save the, uh, the video. So it, it acts a little differently uh, when it's, that's running. So, but here's your date. Here's your date, meaning um, your, your, this is automatically creating this line and these boxes and the diamond. So I'll show you how to do that really simply. Now let's go over to some code. So the first start of it all is build bars, right? Now, if you keep in mind that... Um, we have the to and from dates uh, over on the left, as I showed you. Uh, let's just go through this code pretty quickly, right? For each shape in my shapes. Okay, again, it's Ray Mills, Excel, and VBA Craftsman.com. For each shape. So here what I'm doing is I'm just going sure and cleaning up all the old ones. So I delete them, okay? And then here I'm cleaning up the, the headers, you know, January through whatever month we go to. Now, this portion here, we just go through those those values oops I don't want to do that I want to do this so it's going to go through the the end dates and the estimated finish date to get the latest date so it knows how far to build or how far how many months to go out and if we look 6 13 21 2021 is our last date and that's why it goes to June so it automatically calculates that okay so that's the first thing. It, that's the second thing it does after it cleans up, right? So it runs down that list, and it actually doesn't move. It's just using, you know, active cell offset, or you know, so it's actually not moving. It's just referencing the cells, which is always the best way to code, right? Uh, and then it goes through and it starts building those pieces, right? Now, one of the complications of this is these are merged cells, right? And that might have been a problem, except we know them are at cells. So if we just reference this, you could get into trouble. So we just want to look at the, so to speak, we want to look at the bottom merge cell when we're doing the blue, right, to get the positioning, and the top of the merge cell to get the green for the positioning, right? 
So I'll, that will come in, in here and we'll talk about it. Okay. So we look at the start column and we go on and we say, okay, extend across and put those dates in there, right? So cells 3 plus X, it starts at 10. You'll see that that's February and it keeps adding, 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 you know, it's February, March, April, May, June, July, right? Then, then it, it uh, actually, I actually a little bit more um, precise than you might think. This portion here simply says, okay, let's make sure that the, the month is the appropriate number of days wide, right? We calculate the day width, and uh, day width is, you know, how many days divided by how big it, all those columns are. So it gets a pretty precise day width. Now let's create our bar objects, right? So the first thing we do is we find the leftmost um, position, right? What I'm saying there is the leftmost position. We start at I. So this really, oops, this represents the leftmost position, right? So everything happens from there. Oops. Oops. I got to get out. That won't let me go back in until I do that. Okay. So, so then the top, we just bring it down slightly. That's all. Calculate the left. Doing two month cells. So first thing I do is I go across until the cell. I build a, I build a, uh, I build, a, I look, I go until I find the latest month, right? So if it's January, uh, June, tw June 21st of 2020, I go all the way across till June. I take the left position of June, right? And then I'd add in how many days. I think it was the 21st, right? So there would be 21 days, right? So it's very precise. It goes all the way over. And then the only place you might get a little drift, as I call it, or inaccuracy, is the 21 days because there are limits of the accuracy of this, okay? And then I calculate the width. I calculate the start date, the end date. And what do you know? If you have the start date and you have the end date, you can figure out, you know, or you actually know where the position is of the start and the end date. Then you can calculate the C, D width equals D right, D left, and that tells me how big it must be, right? And then I name it. I name it, right? And then I call add dynamic box. So now that's a subroutine, dy add dynamic box. That's a subroutine down here to actually create the box, right? And I, I, I color it accordingly, right? Depending upon, so if it's line today, it's a red line, right? Which is a trick. It's really a, a very thin box, right? Uh, it, and if... If it's uh, planned, it's going to be green. And then if, if it's not, either of those two, it goes default to the blue, right? And the only thing I do is put a little uh, border around it, okay? So that's pretty simple. And I think, did I show you it? I don't know if I did. Let's, let's, let's go here. So let's, let me, let's change this 416 to a different date just to show you that it's going to do it. Let's just say 416 became 501, all right? 5 slash 01 slash 2020, right? So we'll, that should make a difference, right? So it should go over to here. And let's see. It's a little slow. I get it. Not, not, not terribly so, but it is doing a bit of calculation, etc. And it'll run along, and then boom, there you go. It's done. And did it go? Remember we said 515? Uh, is that... Uh, I did 515? Five, five, yep. Uh, where's my 515? Oh, that was already 515. I thought I did 51. Oh, maybe I made it 51. Okay. So 51, yeah, look at the drift. It went all the way. It went over. So you can see, let's, I'm not happy with that. Let's make it 610 just to see, so you can absolutely see that it is doing it correctly. Not happy with that. I way that showed you that. And we'll go, it'll delete it. Now remember, we've made that 610 for the blue bar. That should really pop up as a problem. And 610, what do you know? It's working. So it, it just it, it just shows you that you can create these, have them update. Like if you did the change of it on any of these cells, you could have it update automatically without the update. And these, you could, you know, you could make this form as elaborate as you want, right? You could actually add an event to one of the bars, uh, to the bars and have them, you know, read you the details of this project, right? So they remind everybody, if you're, again, if you're doing a presentation, it's dynamic, it's smart, it, it, uh, it will really, um, and it's very precise. So it'll, it'll convey the messages you need to do when you have, in this case, wow, we're, we're, we're really in trouble. We have some tremendous runovers, okay? So that, so I'm going to have it out on my, my website, um, Excel and VBA Craftsman. I'll put the code out there and have fun with it. Thanks.